Oh God, yeah. Welcome to an emergency episode of the Between Buckets podcast. My name is Lucas Pierce, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend, Patrick Cross. And Patrick, what a day it's been. Sure has been, Lucas. We've got a major storyline emerging with the Zion Williamson injury. A lot of factors at play here, and it's, uh, it's an interesting start to the season before it's even begun. It was an incredibly just shocking thing to wake up to. I... My mind just went straight through all the possibilities for the Pelicans now, how it changes the Western Conference, and obviously the Rookie of the Year conversation. But before we get into that, let's hear from a quick plug. If, like Lucas and myself, you enjoy a side dish of written analysis to go with the main meal, which is this podcast, then you should head to betweenbuckets.com. On the site, you'll find feature articles looking at topics such as Giannis' MVP defense, a critical year for Ben Simmons, and our top 25 player rankings heading into the 2019-20 season. Be sure to check it out as there are some contentious names challenging conventional wisdom and some familiar faces in declining places. Also, be sure to follow Between Buckets on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more updates and analysis. Back to the pod. So, Patrick, about five hours ago, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN reported that Zion Williamson underwent successful lateral meniscus surgery and is expected to return in six to eight weeks. It's a major news story in the first major Woj bomb for this season because six to eight weeks roughly equates to about 20 to 30 games. And uh, if you're like me and you expect New Orleans to be conservative with their prize number one pick... You're probably looking at that around that eight-week marks, which would probably lead us into Christmas, which is about 30 games. And that's a significant chunk of the season and a significant roadblock in Zion's path already before it's even begun. Oh, absolutely. And I think the most shocking aspect of it is, one, his age. He's 19. And two, he, the way that his body, obviously, is is designed and the explosiveness that comes with it the thought of him not being able to tap into that is a terrifying one. And obviously, the nature of this repair isn't really something that we should be immediately be alarmed by in most cases. If we look at uh, Russell Westbrook, Derek Rose, they've both, I guess, in the last five years had meniscus repairs and their explosiveness, particularly Russell Westbrook's, has certainly remained intact. Yet yeah. What bothers me is the weight and the size of Zion. And I think there's definitely a discrepancy between him and Russell Westbrook. Just the wear and tear on his na- knees at an already young age is quite a dis- disconcerting thing to think about. Yeah, I think that's what makes this a bigger story. Not, It's not just that the number one picks out for six to eight weeks, which is you know a reasonable sized story, but I think what makes it a bigger one is because of that implication for Zion in particular. I mean, at 285 pounds, which is 129 kilos, on a 6'6 frame, there has been speculation that he the weight is going to be a bit of an issue in terms of injury. And for that to become... For that to be realised before the season's even begun and already has a knee injury, that's why I think this issue is bigger than it seems on paper on first glance because of the, the, the history that we've had of guys, especially athletic guys like you mentioned, Derek Rose and Russell Westbrook having knee repairs like this, similar early in their careers, and that has gone on to affect them in the future. If we see something similar with Zion Williams, especially at his weight and size, it's going to alter... It it puts a a question mark on the rest of his career and what that might look like now. Definitely, and because it is a six- to eight-week return, uh, the surgery is that they've... seems, from my experiences, to be a trimming of the meniscus. And... Whilst that makes the timetable so much more quicker, the longevity in his career is definitely now at risk because he has less meniscus. So every jump, every run accumulated over the body of his career may in fact expedite his decline. And whilst, again, let's not get too carried away in uh, dramatizing this surgery for all we know he with you know modern technology and his body everyone's different it may not eventuate like that but just the idea of that is yeah it's it's really changed 
in some ways, my excitement for the Pelicans this season. Yeah, it's definitely possible that, you know, this injury is a one-off. It's an aberration. It's just unlucky timing such so early in his career, and he could absolutely bounce back towards the end of the season and finish strong and have a good year. And even his career could be fine going forward, but I just think there was already doubt as to the viability of his body. And now, for the, for an injury like this to occur so early in his career, before the regular season even begun, it's just going to put a question mark over him for the next, you know, for the foreseeable future, really. I mean, it's going to be a big topic of conversation in years to come, even if he does finish out this season strong. How long his body is going to last for? Is he going to be a guy that's going to play 15, 20 years in the league? Or is this just going to be a one-off issue and it's, you know, it's going to be fine going forward? It'll, it'll be a really emerging and evolving story over time. Without getting too sidetracked, I think 15 to 20 years was never something I ascribed to Zion just because of his skill set. Once that athleticism fades, I don't know if he'll ever become a shooter and that his size may render him you know, a little bit ineffective later on in his career. But back to the point, I think his recovery is also a huge issue. When someone has that much muscle mass and such a rare and unique athletic frame, maintaining his conditioning during his rehabilitation is going to be a very interesting challenge. And I think um, based off other injuries like Derek Rose's or Joel Embiid's or very players with varying sizes and body shapes it really can affect the timetable yeah these his strength and conditioning is going to be a major factor of him going forward there's already it's going to bring a lot more doubt into whether this 129 kilo body on a 66 frame is viable in the long term perhaps over the coming weeks or days we're going to see storylines emerge about how weight loss might be a necessary thing for him to do because he is just putting so much pressure through his joints and we've with a game that's dependent on his athlete extreme athleticism and explosiveness the opportunity and you know risk profile for injury going forward is just exponential it, it it's um it's different to other players zion has been infinitely more polarizing than any of his rookie classmates yeah definitely a big part of the story is that it's zion and that he, his rookie season was so hyped as well coming into it and you and I both expected it to be massive and it definitely still could be but it's just the bottom line I think is it's really disappointing that um we've got a six to eight week injury already because um I know we were both really keen to watch him play in the real league he had a really strong preseason performance I think there's a fantastic opportunity there on the Pelicans roster as well for him to have a pretty dominant season straight out of the gates, and there's just a roadblock there early. Speaking of the Pelicans roster, talk to me now about how you think they proceed. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where they go. They've got a couple of options in what they could do. So in the meantime, while Redick, uh, sorry, while Zion is out, looking at their sort of depth chart, they've still got you know, quality players. They've got Drew Holiday still there, of course. You've got Lonzo Ball, Ingram, and Derek Favors. Those four, uh, you know, what many would expect to be the starting four that were to go along with Zion. But they've got a couple of interesting choices to see who they can plug into the starting lineup here. I think one option would be to go smaller and just put JJ Redick into the starting lineup. And then he'd be shifting someone like Ingram over to the power forward. Um, it'd be a pretty small lineup, and I'm not sure whether they'll go ahead with it. Another option could be to go a little bit bigger and throw someone like a Jalil Okafor in at centre, slide of favours to the power forward, or maybe even go a bit younger and go Jackson Hayes. So they do have a little bit of depth and versatility in what they can do here, but it, it's definitely a huge hit to their projected production, early on at least. Oh, definitely. I have no real issue with kind of their guard depth. I think the varying combinations of Lonzo Ball, Drew Holiday, JJ Redick, Josh Hart, there's definitely a serviceable solution there. It's more, can, does Ingram have the strength to be, you know, that traditional power forward bruiser in obviously a now non-traditional roster? And particularly what J- Jahil Okafor could bring at, I don't know, could you envision him playing the four uh, for any meaningful minutes? A person, I think his game style, it's more so suited towards a contemporary center. I'm not sure if you could throw out yeah. a lineup with... Okafor and Favors, especially, because I think they're actually reasonably similar. They're both 
a little bit undersized for their position, um, but both are very much sort of back to the basket, mid range oriented players. Um, their defensive projections aren't fantastic, um, so I'm not sure if you'd be able to line them up both together at the start. Yeah, they don't necessarily uh, stretch the floor in a compelling way. No, not at all. And um, it's not to say that Zion Williamson did that either, but obviously he brought so much else on the table. Um, so personally, I'd probably be thinking about throwing JJ Redick into the starting lineup and just embracing this small, fast-paced nature. That the, the It was kind of the identity growing for them anyway, but I'd probably, in their outsides, and I'd probably lean into that a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's almost a guarantee that uh, JJ now starts... Yeah, it's just that veteran presence as well. He's um, it's well documented that he's made the playoffs every year of his career so far. I'm not I'm not going to project that streak to continue, especially in the wake of this injury. But I think they've got a serviceable and clear veteran option off the bench there. I'd slide him in there. I'd, t- I'd throw Ingram in at four. I know he's undersized, especially in terms of strengths. But I think in today's NBA, you should be able to get away with it. Last question before we take a break: Do you think? How, oh, sorry. How many wins? Do you think this injury now costs them? Um, it's difficult to put a number on it. But the Pelicans were getting a little bit of playoff buzz from people before about whether they could be the team to sort of emerge on amongst the sort of young crop of teams like a, a Dallas and Sacramento, whether they could be the ones to launch themselves into the eighth spot in the West. And without giving too much away, because we've got a pod planned for later in the week with, week with all of our projections, um, I wasn't planning on picking the Orleans before this. I thought they'd be in the mix. I thought they'd be a competitive team, maybe a little bit under 500, best case scenario. But I think this definitely takes a pretty significant step back now. I think I, I've absolutely ruled them out of playoffs now. And I think there's going to be more wins available for some other teams in the West. So if you're saying a little bit below 500, and that was best case scenario with Zion healthy, do you think now to this 20 along this 20 to 30 game stretch they're going to quite <laughs> start the season off quite poorly? Uh, I'd say so. Um and that's it speaks to how good Zion is that he's a rookie who hasn't played a single game in the NBA but with him being out 6 to 8 weeks it's changing the course of a seemingly competitive franchise already. Um so across this game I'd expect them to hover like a fair bit below the 500 mark now, to be honest. Even with him, I'd say they'd sort of be around that feet, that mark. No, I agree. We're going to take a quick break. This is a call out for watch enthusiasts everywhere. The Quick 20 network is growing and we now have our very own watch hobbyist website. So head over and visit thenextwatch.com. That's T-H-E-N-X-T watch.com. With a ton of reviews, features, and weekly columns on watches under four figures, thenextwatch.com has it all. So back to your point, Patrick, about the Pelicans and Zion's impact for the franchise. I was wondering if we magnify that league-wide. How does it change the Western Conference, and I suppose, to a certain extent, the Eastern Conference? I suppose it's just one, in terms of the Western Conference, it's just one less candidate that was vying and jockeying for a position there. Um, it's going to open up more opportunities for teams around that 500 mark that I mentioned before. It's going to open up opportunities for them to maybe pick up a couple of extra wins, or at least in relative sense in terms of the standings. Um, and it so, so teams like Dallas and Sacramento, um, unfortunately, should be seeing this as an opportunity. Oh, yeah, certainly. I think anyone that's... This, even the San Antonio Spurs, they're all going to collect a few more wins. And if I think it really comes down to, you know, how the team, the competing team matches up with this, uh, with the Pelicans and obviously the schedule. Some teams, yeah, the, the Western Conference, I wouldn't say it necessarily got easier, but there are now going to be teams that go over their projections. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see whether a team like a San Antonio, Sacramento, or Dallas are going to make a bit of a leap this season. Probably not so much the Spurs, unfortunately, because we kind of know what we're going to get. But at least with Dallas and Sacramento, there's been a little bit of uh, hype building around them of what they could be. Their ceilings are both a bit higher than what they were last year, of course. And I think with Zion's injury, it's just opening up an avenue for them to look a little bit better, at least in terms of relative sense, because it's kind of just one less in the pack. Oh, absolutely. And if we look at kind of who they're going to be playing up against, 
uh, over this immediate stretch. They've got their Western Conference um, rivals in the the Mavericks actually in October. Then they they're very West heavy. Uh, the Thunder versus them on the third of November. I it's a, the Clippers, the Warriors all come soon after. They're very very much oriented in the West in this opening. Uh, one to two months. And that could be critical if if there is like an environment where, say, with signs back for about fifty games and they make a push for that eight seed, who knows? That could come back to bite them if they drop a couple of these games at the start when the head to head win loss is taken into account in terms of a tiebreak. It, it's it's a it's an unlikely scenario, but it could come into play perhaps. Oh, absolutely. And I want to hear your thoughts on the rookie of the year now and the race. And what changes? Does a 20 to 30 game absence rule him out? Yeah, I think this is one of the bigger sort of and more interesting implications of this injury. Um, I'm going to work off the assumption that he's missing about 30 games because I just think the Pelicans are going to be conservative for this one, especially if they get off to a bit of a rough start in terms of wins loss and they sort of behind the pack there. Um, In terms of rookie of the year, I'm not going to rule him out just yet. I think Zion Willem... Zion Williamson was and probably still is a clear favourite for the award. And I think the gap between him and the second, third, fourth option was huge. And I think if Zion can play around 50 games, if he can end the season strong, there might be a bit of momentum and maybe even a little bit of recency bias towards the end of the season where this first sort of month or two stretch can kind of be forgotten in voters' minds a little bit. Oh, it's absolutely possible, particularly if you look at... um... Joel Embiid, I know you've talked about this previously, he generated phenomenal noise and he played, what, less than 35 games in his official rookie season. Yeah, and I, although he didn't end up winning that award, he definitely made that a conversation. Um, Malcolm Brogdon, of course, picked him, pipped him in the end. But I think if if someone, if Embiid can make it at least a conversation in 30 games, if Zion and this sort of the expectations that we had of him, if he can live up to them in that 50 games or so. And I, th- I think it'll be enough to put him in the mix at the very least. And obviously it'll very much depend on how other rookies are going to fare as well. I think many, myself and I believe yourself included, are going to look to Jarb Morant as really in a much more of a pole position now with this injury. Oh, absolutely. The window for him to capitalise is now fully open. And he has a team that's perfectly going to buy into him exploring high usage rates and uh, lots of stat padding. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier on a podcast, um, my dark horse pick was Tyler Hero. I'm not saying that he's necessarily my favourite now that uh, Zion's out. If I I was a betting man and had to put money on it, I'd probably actually still stick with Zion. But I think it doesn't just open up the door of someone like Jar Morant. We could see somebody unexpected like that. His chances for example, are certainly boosted as well. Oh, for sure. And with the first game of the season really starting off with the Pelicans versus Raptors and what was envisioned to be kind of Zion's moment, and there almost was this feel of this handing over the torch almost. How do you think NBA, League Pass, ESPN, all providers... They'd certainly be... They're one of the biggest losers in this outcome as well, obviously, apart from Zion and the Pelicans, naturally. But um, we saw that the Pelicans had a, a major leap in terms of their, you know, um, American nationally televised games. They were given the opening, the, the curtain opener, um, tomorrow versus the Raptors at their ring ceremony. And although, obviously, the night will be about celebrating the Raptors and then receiving their rings, I think the biggest question mark or most inter- in interesting point in terms of the on-court matchup was definitely Zion's debut. And that was going to be a huge feature. And I think, you know, the NBA, ESPN and other providers are definitely going to be disappointed that somebody who is going to get a lot of attention, a lot of viewers who won't be playing for that first six to eight weeks. Oh, absolutely. I think you've nailed it on the head. The star attraction for tomorrow was Zion. They were making this huge deal out of him not only being this new franchise star but just marking an era of youth and um, newfound prosperity in the NBA and it's it's strange just thinking about the game I'd, I wasn't even thinking that it was you know the defending uh, champs and their ring ceremony I was solely just engrossed in this appeal Zion was carrying and I think it definitely changes um, 
just viewership and um, some of the buzz around the Pelicans for the for even perhaps the season. Yeah, it's a really simple point, but just from a fan perspective, it's it's really disappointing that we've waited so long to see how it would fare in the NBA. And now we're going to have to wait another six to eight weeks. It's uh, it, it's it's disappointing news. And outside of the Toronto Raptors fan base, I mean, yeah, was anyone else not solely just thinking about the the show he was going to put on for us tomorrow? Yeah, look, uh, ask anyone outside of Canada, and it probably was Zion's game, and they forgot that the the Raptors won the championship just a few months ago. <laughs> well, anyway, my friend, maybe we should leave it there. We will be back with a new pod following tomorrow's opening games very, very soon. As always, looking forward to it. It's been a pleasure, man. Catch you later. Bye.